broken noses, cracked ribs, pierced legs, severe concussions. The fiction of inflicting injuries on your opponents and Bowder Brothers is super cool. You get in the game, you see crippling strikes and executioner, and you go, wow, I gotta try that out. And then the mechanics don't really work out that well. But what if you took it to the max and you made it good? Hey everybody, Carve here. I'm looking today at the Shamshir Duelist build. The Shamshir is a weapon in introduced in Blazing Deserts DLC about a year and a half ago, or almost two years. And its signature move is Gash, where it has a 50% lower threshold to inflict injuries on your opponents. For those of you that don't know how the injury system works, there are minor and major injuries in the game, and they're also body and head, depending on you know where you hit. So a minor injury requires 25% of your HP to be done in one hit. So if you have 100 HP and somebody does 25 damage to you, to your HP, you got a minor injury. If they do 50% of your HP damage, so 50 damage there, then you'll take a heavy injury. So Gash here lowers the threshold by 50%, the perk Crippling Strikes lowers it by an additional 33%, and Sword Mastery lowers the Gash Threshold even further. I believe it's 6 and a quarter percent that you need to do to actually get somebody a light injury, but I'll get the math up on the screen right now. This video will attempt to answer two questions. One, how to build a Shamshir Duelist, and two, should you build a Shamshir Duelist over other Duelists? I'll give you the quick answer to number two, is if you want to build one, go ahead and do it. This video is not going to stop you, and let's go to number one. So as we start literally every build in the game, we take Colossus from more hit points. Next, we're going to take Crippling Strikes, then we're going to take Executioner. While these perks don't really do anything for you at low levels, a lot of the later perks you want, uh, you have to get to them, so that's why we're picking them now. Next, you're going to pick Student at this point. You actually pick student at a later level than level one because you want Colossus first from, for the HP to like survive that, you know, that level to level three. And then these perks will do more for you. Student has like the best returns at uh, like level five or something. Then we're going to pick Sword Mastery. Then we're going to pick Nimble. Then we're going to pick Berserk and then Duelist and then Killing Frenzy. I'm going to call this the st like the staple part of the build or the or the, the stable part of the build you know these are the staple perks that you're always going to take every time don't pick battle forged and brawny for two reasons one we have a bunch of flex perks that i'm going to talk about right now and if you pick battle forged and brawn you're losing out on a lot of versatility two get over yourself if you don't like using nimble there are some people i've seen comment that say like nimble frontliners they don't have the survivability i'm going to say on any authority that i have with you those people do not know what they're talking about. Nimble was totally fine for this game. If you're afraid of Nimble, it's okay. It's cool. Nimble won't hurt you. But on to the actual flex perks we're going to talk about. So first is Pathfinder or Recover. These, uh, I call them flexes because you might actually be able to get away with not using Recover. Normally, you always want Recover on 4 AP weapons because you have Berserk, which you can proc and then you can recover and you can still get an attack and use all your AP well. So that's why recover is good for duelists. But we have a sword and swords with sword mastery have a reduced fatigue cost to about eight. So if you have a minus fatigue sword like on use, then you can get away with using Pathfinder because the fatigue cost will be reduced to seven or, or six or something. And thus you can re regain more HP than two swings. So you can always swing twice on every turn and use all your AP. Yeah, you don't get berserk every time, but that beats having to take recover because you're very rarely going to actually use recover. Or if you have iron lungs, you go with this. So either pathfinder or recover. So we really have about one flex perk. I'm just going to pick pathfinder right now. Uh, but remember, this could just be recover. All right, so you could pick Fearsome. Fearsome is a really good perk. But the thing is, with a duelist, you're likely already doing 15 points of damage to almost all enemies. I think with, like, Orc Warriors and Armored Unholds, you're probably not doing 15 HP damage if they have full armor. But everything else in the game, even, like, Knights or hedge knights or really heavily armored mercenaries or something i think you're already doing 15 hp damage so i don't think fearsome 
is necessarily a good pick. Very rare, but that's just because you're a duelist. And by your second hit, with Executioner and everything going up, you're definitely doing 15 HP damage. So I really don't think Fearsome is actually good here. Second, you could pick Underdog. Uh, just depending on their melee defense and how you want to play them, Underdog is always a safe bet. Uh, Dodge is a similar safe kind of bet. Gifted is a similar safe kind of bet. Those are kind of lame. Other things that I think are more cool than any of these, potentially Headhunter. So let's think about it. Headhunter now stays if you miss. So Headhunter got a big buff recently, and I've talked about that on the channel. But that means you get head injuries, right? Because you are hitting the head, thus you would do a head injury. So if you get a heavy head injury, like, I don't know, like deep face cut or something, that would be awesome. Um, and you also get the critical damage for hitting a head. So Headhunter on this might actually be pretty baller. Second, I think you could even pick Adrenaline on this. You could pick it even earlier too. You can make this like your your level one or level two perk. Now, why would I recommend Adrenaline? Well, I would only recommend Adrenaline if you have a Stam Zero Shamshir Duelist. So if you have like minus two or minus three fatigue on use, so you're swinging for six Stam or seven Stam, and thus you can always swing twice on every turn, which I have done before. I have a guy like this. I didn't pick Adrenaline on him, but if I did, I would be able to go first with Adrenaline, and then I would be able to double swing, probably cause two injuries, or at least one of them, but I would do a shit ton of damage to him. And then I would never have to worry about being out of Stam, I would just be able to out of Adrenaline Stam, because I can always swing twice on every single turn. So I really think that if you have Pathfinder, Adrenaline would actually be really cool on this build. Uh, if you have Recover, you could do Headhunter, or you could do Pathfinder, Headhunter either way. I think those are probably your best things. Dodge or Underdog are certainly cool. Fearsome is, like, fine, but I think you'll be fine without it. Gifted's cool for stats, but I think, honestly, you'd rather just have some of these other perks that'll just give you more. So, what are the strengths of the Shamshir Duelist? Well, first, because it's a sword... Uh, this is just one that I've recreated. It's the base stats right here. So we're looking at normal numbers. Uh, it actually has a plus 10% chance to hit on every single hit. That is just the regular thing with swords. Second, uh, it's not super fatigue intensive. Even with the base thing, it's only 8. And if we have the minus fatigue on use, it goes down to 6. I don't know why it's minus 3, and this goes from 8 to 6, and this goes from 15 to 13. That must be a bug or some weird rounding error. But with 6 Fatigue, this is how I said you can get the Fatigue Neutralness out of this. Because you swing twice, you only build up for 12. So you're actually regaining Stam every single turn. Third is that you can injure every single enemy in the game, actually. You can injure Orc Warriors. You can injure Unholds. You can injure Lindworms. Yes, I have injured a Lindworm before. I guess the caveat is you can't injure, you know, fucking Undead or Ifrits or something that don't actually have, you know, feelings or, you know, organs that can be injured. But for things that, you know, are alive, you can injure them pretty well. Now, again, are you going to injure a Lindworm all the time? No. Should you bring a Duelist into range of a Lindworm? Also, probably not. But... The fact that you have the potential to injure all these enemies means that you can bring a lot of versatility to the team and make other dudes who have Executioner more useful. Because this guy has pretty high initiative, he's like a nimble duelist, he might be fatigue zero, he's not building up that much fatigue. So he'll go pretty quickly, and he'll be able to proc injuries on everybody in the game. Then if you have a whole team behind him that has Executioner, then everybody's got a 20% damage buff. So I've toyed with the idea of a whole... Executioner team just for the meme like Shamshir duelists and then a bunch of bill hooks in the back or something I haven't actually done that But I think that would be really cool and interesting to see how you could get Everybody on the team to use executioner effectively and you don't actually need to use Gash to proc injuries when you have a good sword on this one This is the one I actually have for this campaign. It's a pretty good max roll. So lucky me but it doesn't need to do this much to proc injuries because the damage is already so high same with the one I have in my other campaign. It's not as good as this one, but it's still able to do a shit ton of injuries just by using the regular slash attack. So that means you don't have to worry about spending all the fatigue with Gash, unless it's like a really high HP enemy. Fourth, is that some injuries are really impactful. Like cut arm sinew gets you minus damage inflicted, cut leg muscles is minus melee defense and minus initiative, Cut Artery is minus HP, Split Hand is minus 50% chance to hit, Split Shoulder is minus damage, Cut Arm is minus, I think, like, 15% chance to hit. So all of these are really nice, and they can really debilitate an enemy and make them not so useful. 
Now onto the weaknesses though. If we look at this, this is remember the regular sham shear that I just made under a custom image. Um, it doesn't have that high armor ignore, so you're gonna need to prep. Uh, you need to prep high armor enemies, even with the max rolls. Not all enemies, like orc warriors, especially in armored unholds. You're going to need to prep them with some other hits before you're really getting the injuries off. It's just not going to do a whole lot. This, I'm sure, the normal one would also suffer against heavily armored human enemies. Second, is that some enemies just can't be injured. Like, that's true. You know, like we said, undead can't be injured. So there's nothing you can do about that. Thankfully, you're still a duelist, so you're still just killing them really quickly. But the gimmick of your build is nothing. You'd rather just be like a mace duelist at that point, right? Because you're just doing more damage and you don't, you're not losing anything but the injuries. Same thing with Fearsome against Undead, but that's a different topic. And third, and most importantly, is sometimes injuries are totally useless. Um, not so much with the the cutting ones, but some of them are like really dumb. Like Broken Nose, enemies regain so much fatigue, and they have such high fatigue pools anyway, that that means nothing to you. Literally, a Broken Nose is just a way to proc Executioner. Some of the other ones, like an enemy is even with Cut Arm, like minus 15%, okay, so it's like seven, eight melee skill they lose. They're probably still gonna hit you eventually anyway, right? If you're in a bad position. So, you know, it's not like the injuries are really doing a whole lot for you all the time besides just getting you more damage. You're still gonna kill the enemies. You're not just gonna leave them alive because they have a cut arm. You know, <laughs> like, oh, he's, he's weak now, just leave him alive. Like, no, you're gonna kill him. So that's why my big problem with crippling strikes and executioner is that they're not that useful as perks normally because you're just gonna kill the enemy anyway. So I don't really care about leaving them alive to be injured. They're gonna die in about an extra turn or two hits. So with this build, it's kind of fine because you're killing them so quickly anyway that uh, you're basically just buffing your own damage. So you're your own one man army and that's cool. The idea of getting the whole team to have executioner that, like I said, I said before, it would be really cool, but also it has the potential to be really dumb because you're, you're just killing the same enemies. Like you're not giving everybody an injury and then killing everybody. You're killing like one guy and then the next guy and then the next guy. So if you're all just ganging up on them, does the 20% extra damage actually do that much for you? Maybe not because you're already hitting them like four times anyway. Now, when we compare to other duelist weapons, how does the Shamshir duelist actually stack up? Well, the plus accuracy does help you in the long run. The Shamshir Duelist is better than Spear Duelists, which just like suck. Better than Noble Sword Duelists, because they have the same amount of ignore, and this one gives you injuries. Better than Flail Duelists, because those suck. I think it's better than Dagger Duelists as well. It probably loses out to things like Cleavers or, or Hammers. I don't quite, I don't done the actual math on it, but you know, just by playing a long time, I can just, you know, get the gist. Um, definitely lose out the Mace Duelists. Mace Duelists have so much armor ignore. Those things can just bonk the hell out of everybody. And they might even get some pretty nasty injuries as well. I think the issue with the Shamshir Duelist is that a Mace Duelist can use a winged mace and be totally fine. This build I think needs a pretty good famed or at least a famed in general to really be worth making. So in conclusion, would I make one of these? Yes, I would. If you have not done one of this, just try it out. Your campaign will not fail because you made a Shamshir duelist instead of a mace duelist. Does not matter. But would I make this if I have another famed weapon? Like if I have a famed mace, would it be like, oh, Carve told me to try out the Shamshir duelist? Like, nah, man, you know, <laughs> make your mace duelist at that point. If I don't have any fames at all, I maybe wouldn't make this. I would probably just wait till I find a pretty cool name Shamshir, and then I would get all on board with this build at all. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. This is a really fun build that I've built a couple of times now and I'm looking forward to using it again. It's not something I'll probably have in every run just because you're going to be waiting for those named sham shears, but it is really fun and I hope that you guys find some soon so then you'll be able to try the build out. In any case, have a nice day. See you around. Peace.